St. Paul's 13th chapter of the first letter to the Corinthians. And it's all about love, love. That's right, we've all heard it at weddings. Love is patient, love is kind, love is not jealous, etc., etc. Love is actually very simple and usually enjoyable, but it is not easy. True love is more than a feeling or more than a chemical release. It is an action. It is a verb, and it looks like something. A basic theological definition of love I can give you is to will the good of the other. To love someone is to will the good of the person standing in front of you. The good of another person means health, happiness, security, etc. Therefore, to will the good of your stubborn toddler is to deny them yet another cookie and make sure they eat their carrots and sliced fruit. To will the good of your best friend who forgot her lunch is to give her half of your peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And to will the good of your grandpa on his birthday is to sneak around and make plans for a surprise birthday party for him. What about when we will the good of another in place of our own good? What does it look like to will the good of that kid who's kicking your seat on the airplane? What does it look like to will the good of your family when you are so stuffed and tired, ready for a nap on Thanksgiving at grandma's house, but there's a huge stack of plates next to the sink? What does it look like to will the good of your friend who was voted homecoming queen and you weren't? Simple, but not easy. What is the ultimate goodness then? We know it's happiness, security, health, but in our Christian scope of things, ultimate goodness is spending eternity in heaven with God and with that person that you are loving. To will this good is to desire to be in heaven with them in unity for eternity. Our moral theology professor in seminary invites us to go deeper, and he says simply that love is unity. True love is the desire to be united forever in heaven. This is even simpler, but much less easy. Luckily, we have the perfect example to follow. That is Jesus Christ. Everything that Jesus says or does is love. Everything Jesus says or does, rather, is because he wants to be with us in union, in heaven, for eternity. But he can't have that quite yet, so he tries to make as much heavenly union happen here on earth. Everything that we say and do to each other should be out of a desire to be in union in heaven for eternity. So what does union with your daughter look like? when she and her family stop coming to Mass and stop practicing their faith altogether? What does desiring eternal unity with your brother look like when he's choosing a lifestyle that is not in line with our Catholic teaching? What does desiring eternal unity with your cousin look like as you visit him in prison and see his teary eyes across the glass as you're talking to him through the phone. True love desires eternal unity. And that can't come without a relationship, without friendship. True love never leaves. Jesus never leaves. Jesus ate and Jesus drank with sinners because he wanted unity with them. And the same is going to happen in just a few moments in the Eucharist. Not only is he going to eat and drink with us sinners, he's going to let us sinners eat and drink him. 
And he isn't going to leave us. He's going to not give up fighting for eternal unity with us. He's going to stay right here and dwell in that tabernacle. And he's going to move forward with us in our hearts, in our minds, and in our souls as we go out and try to spread that unifying love to everyone we meet. As we move forward into this fourth week of ordinary time, this month of February, we all have different encounters with all different sorts of people in our life. Let us remember that Jesus commanded us to love each other as I have loved you. Or rather, seek unity with each other as I have sought unity with you. This is very simple, but it is not easy. And so may Jesus Christ continue to live with us, live through us, and give us the strength to love each other and seek unity in eternity. Amen.